nature of the fact that it's a best of five against Penta, and then they win, which I think surprised a lot of people. You know the odd thing about this band phase is we've got War here, whereas EG, like you say, has a somewhat you know, sketchy history on this map. On the other hand, Bank, I mean, that is an EG map, something that you expect to see them want to go to. And Penta as well would probably be comfortable on a bank. So this is going to be very close, as was that shot from Necrox. The shield in the hallway actually going to allow that player from Penta to continue to play in that spot. That's Kanta Ricchetti. He will actually win the fight over Dokabi on that window. What is up, bras, and welcome back. And getting right back into our pro tip series, we're going to be covering the badass match and the much anticipated rematch between Penta and Evil Geniuses. And I'm gonna ask you guys a big favor, and that is that if you guys enjoy this video and others like it, if you guys could please turn on bell notifications. Google has recently been pushing out a testing algorithm where you guys may not be getting your videos in chronological order, but more so as like a recommended whoever Google thinks that you might wanna watch. Now this coming week is gonna be really exciting. I got a couple videos planned as well as our 250,000 subscriber special and that video is the most beastly video I have ever done. I put a ton of hours into it so if you guys want to make sure you see that on time please check the bell notification. But anyways you guys can see right here this is a really detailed mirror setup with the shield protecting us from the window and we saw later on that this position was able to pull off the kill. This is really sneaky definitely going to stop a bunch of people from pushing from that small tower and also the bathroom. So are managing to hold this push very effectively. Goga gonna get another kill onto NVK, so Penta holding on firm a second for Goga as he pushes up to Cafeteria. All right, now what we're gonna be looking at is the second Mira placement that Penta was using, and this setup was placed so nice. What he had was it overlooking the dining room, and then he had the right wall with the bottom part knocked out so that he could create an insanely long line of sight. You guys could see he was all the way back towards that little pantry area, and from here you can see that door as well as when he was pushed up here, he was getting also, again, really nice angles into the small tower so anybody pushing from like this west side when they're playing on Oregon this is such a difficult mirror combination to contest especially if you guys get both of these in play and you're able to coordinate this with a friend and I know that I've shown a variation of a mirror setup in kitchen but I love when tricks are evolved and this one's definitely evolved by adding on that little tip of shooting out the bottom along the floor Match on their next defense so by uh, virtue of the fact that both teams have won on attack here, lots of opportunity for Penta to go anywhere. Now, the way that the basement worked earlier on was pretty standard for most teams, especially when Ying had those smokes. Likely push would be from the main lobby, take control of meeting hall. Once you've pushed them out, you've usually got about a minute, a minute and a half on the... All right, now we got two spicy Mute Jammer locations, and these are both going to be taking place when defending the downstairs. Now, this first one's going to be in the supply room, and I'll show you guys exactly where that jams up in the meeting hall, and the second one is going to be in the supply closet, which also jams the other side of the meeting hall. Now, take note that once you vault on top of these boxes, there's going to be a second little layer. Just make sure that your Mute Jammer goes on the very, very top of the stack of the boxes. And then you guys will see that drones that are trying to get into this little connector that connects it to the lobby, they're not going to be able to get past whether they go left or right. got the diffuser down. It was the bandit who was able to come back and retake sight single-handedly while Kanto just held things down. So for evil geniuses, you gotta be better. And Jonas just slips through the cracks as the first kill goes to Penta as Pengu eliminates Canadian. Your Hibana is down, but at this point, you've heard all those ex
All right, now I really like this variation because normally this hatch is like a go-to, you need to reinforce it. But what we saw Penta using it for was actually a really nice rotation just in case you get pinched from meeting hall. It's not always the safest thing to just stand up and sprint to the back of the tower, right? So what we saw was them just using a sneaky drop down and then from here you can actually run back up to the tower and use this little cut out wall to put shots on the attacking team that comes in trying to pinch you expecting you to be in there but what actually happened was you rotated up and you got the jump on them now. You've got a Mira and a deployable shield just to the south part. Watching at the top of elevators where Kanto is going to play at with an ACOG. It's as good of a place for an ACOG as you can because you can see not just onto the windows but also all the way into the main lobby. And then we've ever seen from them, let alone another team thus far, at least not that I can recall. Like I was saying, based on that last round, I think that Penta is well prepared for this map regardless of who they have as a substitute. Their strategy seems to be very well orchestrated. You could see BC looking for this angle. He might actually get it. If he waits just a little bit longer, Cantor Ketty, when he peeks around the corner, might expose himself, and yes, he will! Oh, so close! Unfortunately for EG, it's a dock of Kanto, and he's gonna be able to heal himself back to full HP, but still, some utility wasted, and I believe the mirror window also was opened up. All right, so on this one, I'm not really going to go over that mirror setup. If you guys really want to, you can pause the video and take a look. But I really haven't done enough experimenting with that in actual games. I think it looks pretty cool. But in order for me to actually like really want to incorporate it into this video, I definitely want to try it out a little bit because it does seem risky. But the thing that I do want to include is this dirty angle because not only now can you counter this mirror setup that might start to be popular when defending upstairs, a lot of times the roamers are going to be camping in this corner and I find this corner a very common place whether they have the mirror setup or not. That's going to be a very nice tight angle that you can incorporate regardless of the game. BK, he was about to go for it but didn't. BC securing the kill on a Pengu thanks to some great work there underneath the barricade and now top floor control in favor of EG. That was a very back and forth push, but successful one regardless. Now this one is a sick angle that Cantor Akedi was using from the staff room looking all the way up to the top of Skylight Stairs. You can just simply shoot it out or you can impact grenade the top of these reinforced walls and you're actually going to be able to see over by standing on one of the many tables. You can choose which one you go on depending on what type of angle you want to get. But anyways, mainly focusing on the angle, you can see that once you're at the top of Skylight Stairs, I can't even see back to shoot unless I lie down. So that means as soon as I enter, I'm going to start getting my feet taken out and there's not much I can do about it. It's at your disposal. You got 20 seconds and EE1D. You'd only be able to use one at this point anyway after the changes to Lion. But look at below. Jonas is watching the double hatch downstairs. And if they can ignore him and push in a direction in which he can't see, well, that's going to be tough. Kanto gives his position away for just a second. All right, now I freaking love three floor angles. And this one that Eunice was using was really sick. This one's going through two hatches all the way from the CCTV room all the way up to the janitor's closet. Now, when anybody is attacking the upstairs, a lot of times roamers like to be in the janitor's closet. It's definitely going to be a traffic area that attackers are going to have to go into. So whether you're attacking or defending, this is definitely an angle to keep in mind because this is one of those angles that's probably not going to get contested and could give you a chance to get a nice, free, easy pick. happens to be gone. They'll look through those windows, Pengu just holding steady. And this is one of the only major downsides to teams if they can't deal with the window pressure that teams put on it to make holding CEO very untenable. And that's why you need to make sure you have strategies to deal with that because where Pengu is is a very significant position as he can hold down not just the site but also rotates in and out. Yeah, it's a very powerful spot, as you say, and usually the counter is to run out on that player, but you can see that there's actually Goga outside 
right, waiting for that run out. So no matter what, not going to work out for EG. They're just going to have to wait as long as they can. And that seems to be their strategy so far, but it's not going to happen anymore. Goga gets Canadian, an ultimate decider of border. I don't think we could have picked a better map to be the decider for this matchup. One of the most, ba one of the more balanced maps in the map pool. All right, so what we saw here was this super annoying angle that Pengu was able to hold down and the commentators were so right that this position is so powerful when you're attacking upstairs. Now, unfortunate for Canadian, this jump out didn't work for him, but let's face it, when you're playing casual or ranked, the majority of the time, teams aren't gonna be that coordinated to actually have somebody stay outside and watch specifically for this jump out, like how Pengu and Goga were working so well together on that. Goga had his back and when Canadian went for it, he got taken out. But you gotta admit, the majority of the time when you go for this jump out, there's only gonna be one person repelling, could be a very easy pick. Downstairs, he was playing in that passport office, he was able to get taken out very quickly on. He'll toss one outside and one of those black guys will go on to the camera pole. There's an IQ, of course, from Jonas that could possibly see it as he'll toss his second black eye that we saw at least on camera and he'll play downstairs. Big factor here is, does he get pinched early by? You can see Eunice moving his way to the top of East Stairs. Canadian though, downstairs, instead of being eliminated early in the round, will get a kill for himself. And that's Pengu, a very formidable foe. Absolutely denied the control over that North Balcony. Very important. As you can see, it's going to be an office take from Penta and not having a North Balcony means very little crossfire will happen when pushing into archives, which is obviously the last hump of this assault. All right, so the reason I'm calling these ones the pay to win cams is it has everything to do with just it being the Valkyrie Elite. Now, in our previous Pro League Tips video, we saw a camera series that had to do with the Valkyrie Elites, but these ones are gonna be in different locations, and it just has to do with how the Valkyrie Elite cameras are so much more brown, and they blend into so many more surfaces than the previous cameras. Again, it does really depend where you choose to throw them, but Border specifically, it has a bunch of different nice brown colors, and a lot of these cameras are gonna blend in. But even if you're not using the Valkyrie Elite, these camera positions are so badass. What we saw Canadian use this camera for was in order to take out Pengu who is on top of the vehicle customs and that definitely threw that round off for Penta. But anyways you guys can see here how difficult it is to see specifically this camera and there's so many more badass cam spots like that especially on border. Say the reason people bring a rook is because he's a little bit more expendable. You put down your rook bear, or your armor, and you can play with him with uh, an aggressive spawn peak. Because if you lose him, uh, you don't really lose much unless or uh, outside of the actual operator and player itself. You can see that was Fabian's plan there. It did not work out, but like I said, no utility lost since he already put the armor down. All right, now this is a spawn kill location. I'm definitely gonna be taking Maestro to the next time I play Border. I wanna give a huge shout out to myself for saying Maestro correctly this time. Please give me a thumbs up for that. But anyways, all jokes aside, this spawn kill location that we saw Fabian using was pretty dang clever. You guys most likely know about the pre-fire spots that go through the offices because I've covered that before. But actually on the other side of the hall, this wall is actually a soft wall too. And from here, you can shoot out the left and the right window and you can pick off one of the most popular spawn locations for attackers. And I really can't wait to get into a game and test this spot out more. Anyways, you guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I still got the finals Pro League Tips video that happened between Lick Liquid and Penta coming very soon, it's definitely going to be a packed one. Also, the other detail I want to point out is Fabian didn't die from the peak hole. He actually died when he overextended himself and looked out on the side of the hall, not from the actual murder hole. But anyways, don't forget about that giveaway. Still giving out a DX Racer gaming chair. I'm pretty jelly because I'm still using my Costco one, but that's how much I love the Coconut Bra family. I'll see you guys all very soon in the next video. Peace.